Okay, uh, I will hook up with the music, I realized, audio, um, so sorry for no load-in, I, I guess elevator music, <laughs> while we wait for everything to officially start. Uh, we're gonna get started here right on the dot at 8, or whatever time it might be on the dot for your you know, whoever's viewing. Um, yeah, uh, everything sounds good. I just had a little, some changes to make um, in terms of like the layout. The, uh, nothing's changed. I've just added like a little thing there. So, um, music is pretty quiet, but keep it that way. louder. That way there's something in the background, so it's just not my voice. Although that's why you're here. Um, we made here do a quick test test one two three test one two three Test one two three. I think we sound good. Hey Rory, how's it going? <laughs> That's fine. You can you can be you can be here for as long as you want. It's fine. I appreciate that you decided to stop by. I understand for some reason people's Thursday nights are usually pretty busy. It's like the one of the few days of the week that I have like a chill day. Um, let's see, I think we're, one more minute and we'll officially start, just want to stick to the schedule. Oh, well, you know, <laughs> that might be a reason not to show up, I, I, no, I get that. You're still traveling? Wait, are you, so you're not in, a, you're not tra visiting Mia anymore, I'm assuming. Okay, you're moving. Ooh, that's exciting. That's exciting. And not fun because you're moving and not have like a... Not having like a fun time or whatever. I don't know. Moving sucks. I always hate moving. Moving. Um, gosh, I really wrote this at the last minute, so. <laughs> That's really good timing. That's like the best timing and I appreciate it. Oh. 
Okay, we can officially begin. Uh, I'm really excited for this episode uh, because it's one of my favorite characters. But I mean, what character in Wonder Woman isn't my favorite character at this point? But anyway, hello everyone. I'm Amelia, Queen Llama, and welcome to the Themyscarin Agenda. It's uh, my monthly talk show uh, dedicated to all things Wonder Woman. Uh, based on what you, the viewers, uh, and people on Twitter would like to hear about. Uh, so last month you guys voted on Cheetah. Barely, mind you, it was like between this and like a Wonder Woman movie review. Um, and I was kind of hoping that it'd be Cheetah because I, I, I think it's a good time to talk about Cheetah because, you know, Wonder Woman 84 started. And, you know, I'm just so excited for that movie. Um, so I think it's a good time to discuss the cheetah. I'm sure like everyone has like their article, like who is cheetah? Uh, but you haven't had a cheetah article or episode like this yet. Um, before we jump in, um, just, I, again, I'll go over kind of the format of the episode, what we're going to be discussing on a kind of side note, laziness on my part, I still owe everyone a summary from last month's episode, but uh, to be fair, editing 11 pages just does not sound like a lot of fun for me, so <laughs> so I've kind of been putting it off. Um, but yeah, no, full on, just I need to, I really should get it out of the way and get it up there. Um... So I will, I promise, I promise. Uh, so this entire episode is dedicated to Cheetah and you'll see her kind of in the corner over there. Um, that's actually Debbie, a uh, little Debbie, the second Cheetah, but we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, it's all about the Cheetah. Um, one of Wonder Woman's most recognizable uh, villains. I'll discuss kind of each of the big main incarnations of Cheetah, some key stories, and uh, so like key stories and then analyze kind of how the characters change over time while I'm discussing the different versions. Uh, all the stories mentioned will be from the main Wonder Woman run and the original Sensation Comics run. Hey Andrew, how's it going? Thank you for stopping by. So, with that said, let's get into just kind of a general overall summary. You know, who is Cheetah? Uh, Cheetah is a Wonder Woman villain first appearing in Wonder Woman number 6 in the year 1943, specifically the month October. Uh, the first Cheetah was Priscilla Rich, uh, and Cheetah was her split personality. Like, it wasn't alter ego, it was like legitimate split personality. Uh, she's obsessed with Wonder Woman for a number of reasons, but mostly because she feels Diana's taken something away from her. Um, and I'll continue to refer to Cheetah as a she, uh, because there's only been one instance in which a man was the Cheetah, and it was probably the worst idea ever. Um, Cheetah is a canon lesbian. I will say this multiple times. She is, she's a damn lesbian. Uh, she's an environmentalist, an archaeologist, uh, and I mean, she's a damn cat lady, so she can't not be gay. Uh, so, you know, the fascinating thing about Cheetah and something that I've kind of, that's grown on me, um, is that the persona of the Cheetah is just the, you know, it's the base animal instinct within a person, like, manifested as the Cheetah. Uh, like all human desires from the host are gross, grossly exaggerated upon transformation. You know, ambition becomes greed, hunger becomes gluttony, that sort of thing. This uh, lack of control. Lesbian cat ladies are va valid, indeed. Yeah, male cheetah was the worst idea ever, but we'll get to that, why it's the worst. Um, the lack of control has been explained in various ways. Uh, William Moulton Marston, the original creator, uh, he was a psychologist and, um, he saw the cheat as a split personality brought to life by a fit of jealousy. Um, I wouldn't say that's, you know, scientifically correct 
or okay in any way, but that's just the way it was interpreted in the comics. Um, later on, the powers of the cheetah kind of became uh, a burden and a punishment to the user. Um, just as, like, you know, you, you get what you paid for kind of kind of thing. You know, if you're a greedy person, you're going to be... Uh, you're going to be kind of a even worse person as cheetah sort of thing. Um, the whole being, like, being cheetah as a burden, uh, it was very much fueled by misogyny, I believe. Uh, but again, we'll get to that kind of later as we explain the different versions. Um, if you're a true galaxy brain believer like I am, uh, you'd realize cheetah isn't exactly a villain. She's not necessarily evil. Um, especially with her current version, I believe they've really done a great job of kind of smoothing over a lot of the issues that the character had over the years. Um, but yeah, Galaxy Brain is seeing Cheetah as not a villain. Um, you can jot that down. Cog Whistle, thank you for the follow. And welcome to the Mascaran Agenda. I appreciate it. Um... So, what kind of powers does Cheetah have? Uh, like, I, I mean, she's super fast. She's super strong. Um, she, it's, she's one of the fastest DC heroes. Uh, right up there with, like, Professor Zoom. Or am I getting my flash? I might be getting my flash villain. But she's up there, right up there with Zoom. Um, not nearly as fast as the reverse flash, for sure. Uh, neither is Diana. So it's like, there's this whole diagram that has like all the fastest heroes, and so, um, but yeah, she's pretty damn fast. I mean, she's a freaking cheetah. Um, it'd be a crime if she wasn't fast. Um, you know, she's more than just like a Saturday morning cartoon where it's like, oh, we gotta defeat Cheetah today, and then tomorrow we're gonna fight Cersei sort of thing. Um, physically she's on par with Wonder Woman. Uh, in instances when she has more control over her form, she, uh, is very crafty. She thinks like a huntress would. Um, and she has some pretty cool abilities that have shown up from time to time. Uh, you know, cat-like reflexes, no pun intended. Um, claws that are stronger than steel, fangs that can pierce Superman's skin. Uh, in some incarnations... She can turn people into were cats, uh, so she's basically like she's a, a were cat, uh, and then she has control over her feline creatures, kind of uh, like that bad Catwoman movie, but a little but cooler because it's big cats. Um, the way one becomes cheetah is by killing someone, giving the blood to the. Urs Kartarga, um, it's a mouthful, god. It's like this giant fertility plant god. Uh, and then consuming said blood again, and, and then in some instances you have to lay like cheetah pelts on you, and then on the full moon you become cheetah. So very much like Wonder Woman's version of a werewolf. Um, but the big part is you consume the blood, you become the cheetah, and you serve the Urs Kritaga god. Um, to the point where you're often tortured in, in, in being Cheetah. Uh, so, you know, it's there's a lot of baggage when you become the Cheetah. So. Oh, and I forgot to mention, if you guys have any questions about anything, feel free to ask. And I'll get, you know, I'll find a stopping point and ask them. Um, I'm hoping I'm not moving too fast. Uh, this episode is not nearly as dense as the last episode, and I don't think I'll be doing an episode like that anytime soon. Um, this is more my speed. But yeah, uh, that's, that's kind of an overview of who Cheetah is. Um, you know, she, uh, surface level, she just seems like kind of like, Oh yeah, just a villain that Wonder Woman like she doesn't seem like a lot, but there's a lot more to her character, and I think it's because like she is human and she becomes the cheetah sort of thing, and it's like the, in that transformation process it becomes a little more complex. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I'm glad you were able to watch that because I, I'm just, it, that was a long episode for me. That was a lot. And I was still kind of sick and, oh, no, it was not fun. Also, on a side note, uh, I, Taco Casa, uh, shout out to Taco Casa. They don't sponsor me, but um, the cashier, I guess, thought I was cute and gave me a free uh, giant thing of sweet tea. I didn't ask for it. I just wanted a freaking burrito. Um, but shout out to that cashier. Uh, you do you. Um, you know, I appreciate the sweet tea because this thing will rot my teeth for sure. I am a bit cute. I will admit that. But for real, Taco Casa sweet tea is very valid. Um, but yeah, Taco Casa, if you're ever looking for a sponsor, sponsor me. Just saying. Okay. Now on to the fun part where we kind of like get to talk about the different cheetahs and like what what's their business, what's up with them. Um you know, cheetah through the ages, there's been I would say there's at least four kind of main versions and then just kind of like little versions over here. And again, you'll find even diff even different versions of cheetah in like uh sta like JLA stories and um, Justice, which was like this kind of uh, interesting run about the Justice League and like showed different versions of like the JSA and all that. Um, and even within the JSA, because Hippolyta Hapol was at one point Wonder Woman and she dealt with her version of Cheetah in a different way. So it was very interesting. Um, so... Starting with the original OG uh, Cheetah, Priscilla Rich. Uh, Priscilla is a rich debutante with an inferior inferiority complex. Uh, her jealousy and hatred of Wonder Woman manifested in a, a second personality known as the Cheetah. As the Cheetah, Priscilla performs numerous thefts and even tries to frame Wonder Woman for her crimes. Her ultimate goal was to show the world that Wonder Woman isn't as cool as everyone thinks she is and that like all these guys obsessed with her don't need to be obsessed with her. Um, upon reading more, it's very much like jealous of women when you're in fact in love with women this whole time kind of situation. Uh, I think she's more jealous of all the men falling in love with Wonder Woman and the fact that Wonder Woman doesn't fall in love with her. But that's the gay interpretation, and that's the gay optimist in me. Uh, so, many of Wonder Woman's villains during the Golden Age were influenced by theories of psychology and Marston's own academic research and belief beliefs of the human psyche. Uh... <laughs> it is true, the gay agenda is me rereading Wonder Woman comics and seeing how gay they are. Um, so, I, you know, I'm not as familiar with Marston's research. I don't know if you can necessarily find it unless you're, like, a student in school kind of researching this stuff. Um, but he was a psychologist. He did a lot of studies on uh, human sexuality and human, like, sexual pleasure, stuff like that, and the effects of feminine pleasure in terms of using feminine pleasure as a way to reform people um in the sense that by unlocking your feminine side you can kind of like work on the masculine and aggressive parts of you so priscilla and subsequently cheetah were what marston understood as uh, about split personality disorder I wouldn't say it's like an accurate de depiction, but it's like, it's how he interpret interpreted uh, the disorder for an audience of comic book readers. Uh, so it very much comes off as a stereotype, like, oh, the person with a mental disorder is a villain. You know, it's not necessarily a good thing, but it's kind of what we were given in the golden age. Um, his beliefs are further reflected in how Wonder Woman battles Cheetah. He was very much... Uh, yes, Diana would fight Cheetah, you know, they would, they would punch, they would kick, they would, you know, throw each other, um, but there was always a step further with a lot of Wonder Woman's early villains, where she would take them to, uh, Reformation, Transformation Island, and seek to kind of reform them. 
Um, so in a sense, Diana took Cheetah and tried to like work on the uh, the split personality that was uh, try to get Priscilla to overcome um, the personality that was Cheetah. And overcome isn't probably the best term to explain, but that's essentially what Wonder Woman and the Amazons try to achieve in the comic is to remove the uh, remove this negative personality, so to speak, and create like a better citizen for humanity. Um, and I'm pretty sure, you know, no one writing comics at the moment probably is able to properly explain disassociative identity disorder um, or many, you know, disorders of the same kind. So I don't think he was really trying to be accurate in his depiction. Um, that's just how he just wanted to kind of subtly show his ideas through the, the Amazons and Transformation Island. Um, you know, of those theories, through submission and sexual exploration, individuals could could be reformed into being better human beings. Um, and feminine dominance was key to a better society. That's pretty much what you can find across all of his early comics and in the acts of the Amazons as they tried to reform these villains. Whether these were fully his beliefs or not, um, that's uncertain. They're, they're very much unclear about it. Called half of it the love allure. <laughs> yeah, very much. He was... I, I'm not saying that he... Like, he was very much a believer, I, I think is the best way to say it, is that he very much believed in the idea that if if women ruled the world, things would just be better. Um, and I guess if he was alive today, he would be one of those sex positive kind of, kind of people. Um, but yeah. But there's a lot to like his, his research and studies that I don't understand and I don't want to like put my foot in my mouth by saying like too much or assuming too much of what he believed because of course I don't speak for Marston or his family or anything like that. Yes, the love allure. Very much apparent in his Wonder Woman comics. Along with tons of, you know, kinks and, and a kink exploration. It's great. Um, but yeah, uh, Outside of the original Golden Age run, Priscilla doesn't actually appear in a lot of main titles. Um, which is kind of sad because in the few titles that she is in, I, I really did enjoy her like that version of Cheetah. She is. Like, like she gets to some she gets up to some stuff in bed, I'm just saying. Um her golden age version I think is very queer quoted I don't think that was Marston's original intent uh her jealousy of Wonder Woman comes up off uh off as straight up attraction I like I there's no other way to really describe it I mean it's like it, it I feel like a lot of Cheetah's like jealousy and problems would be solved if she just asked woman uh, Wonder Woman out on a date so but that's just me that's just the gay in me hoping for the best um, and, and I feel like finally when Ruka like kind of rebooted Cheetah and, and made Barbara Ann Minerva a lesbian, I feel like it just solved a lot of like the problems that you see in a lot of the different version of Cheetah. But again, I like the rebirth Cheetah way too much. So as far as favorite stories goes, there's a, there's a lot. Um, and I'll kind of like briefly go over them. Don't want to go into too much detail. But, you know, there's Wonder Woman Volume 1, uh, number 6, which was, like, her first appearance. Uh, Wonder Woman Volume 1, number 28, that's kind of another appearance of Villainy Inc., which I really like because it's it's Queen Clea, it's Cheetah, it's Dr. Psycho, it's Dr. Poison, all of them teaming up. It's like how Batman has his ro rogues gallery, Diana has Villainy Inc. Um, Sensation Comics number 22, that's, um, the original Sens Sensation Comics, not the, uh, recent anthology. 
Um, Wonder Woman Volume One, Issue One Sixty. Um. Uh, kind of like a warning for this one. There is a bunch of men in monkey suits. And it was pretty racist in terms of the way the characters were drawn. Um, so I would just, you know, tread with caution. Because, again, a lot of... There's, there's a pretty rocky relationship between uh, racial stereotypes and Wonder Woman. Uh, Wonder Woman Volume 1, Issue 230. This is actually kind of one of my favorite ones. Priscilla is kind of tired of Cheetah taking over every time Wonder Woman shows up. So she figures out that Wonder Woman is actually Diana Prince and tricks Diana Prince into thinking that she's not Wonder Woman through hypnosis. And so she basically gets rid of Cheetah and Wonder Woman at the same time through hypnosis. So it's kind of like a cool instance where you see like Cheetah is like a lot smarter than just like this monster who runs around and stuff like that. And of course, you know, Wonder Woman doesn't go away forever. Like she, she definitely like comes back by the end of it. But it's just like, it's a good kind of contained issue where you get to see like Priscilla in action in a way you don't normally see in the other uh, Priscilla focused Cheetah comics. Um, and there's other versions of Cheetah, of Priscilla with justice um the co the comic series justice uh it was kind of a short run but yeah i you know i really think priscilla is worth checking out uh she's not just like the first cheetah oh and she shows up in legend of wonder woman so that's always guaranteed a good read so that's the first cheetah um over time all the cheetahs kind of become like one version of cheetah and just aliases of barbara and minerva so uh i kind of wish they would separate them back out again because I, I i there's a little bit of every cheetah that i enjoyed except the male version of cheetah that's a bad idea um so the next cheetah was the silver age cheetah and that's deborah dominane uh, she is the niece of the original Cheetah, and she literally only has, like, five comics. She barely appears in the Wonder Woman comics at all. Um, she's transformed into the Cheetah after being brainwashed by Cobra. Cobra is, like, this weird snake dude. Um, he kind of sucks. I hate him. Uh, and, and this version of Cheetah, I feel like, starts off a chain of events in terms of, like, the way Cheetah is treated throughout the rest of the comics um debbie uh debbie's cheetah is more animalistic she snarls she has really long nails that are sharp as steel um and she basically doesn't have any connection to her human self so she's just out of control um like i said earlier i feel like in the Sil silver age there was a definite shift in the way that uh cheetah was presented in the comics I'm not saying the golden age is perfect. I, there's definitely stuff that can like that needs to be addressed. Um, but the misogynistic portrayals in the Silver Age, especially for fem female villains, just felt so apparent to me while I was reading it. Um, she's just a tool for the Cobra, um, and has like no self control over her actions, despite being like a cool kind of college girl who was like really into environmentalism and like eco-activism and all that so i really am kind of disappointed that it was just like literally three issues and then she's gone like three four five issues I'm, it's very short um really i would just recommend issue 247 through 245 volume one uh, it's like her first appearance and and really the rest of her appearances are very minor uh, and she's in Wednesday Comics, which was like this kind of very interesting version of Wonder Woman. Um, but that's outside of all the Wonder Woman stuff. So, yeah, that's there's not much else to say uh, because it's such a short-lived appearance. I feel like the Silver Age kind of really moved away from using Cheetah a lot of the times. Like she, she just wasn't a villain they wanted to use. They wanted to use angle man and all these and and all these different male villains so it wasn't as fun um i'm glad they brought her back after the uh post-crisis i feel
feel like I'm blasting through this. I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast. Um, but yeah, I was pretty straightforward in my outline, so. Uh, oh, I forgot to mention. Yeah, they kill off Priscilla. Like, she apparently she's just some old bird and just freaking kicks the bucket. And... <laughs> And how Cobra convinces Debbie to like that she is Cheetah is by like showing images of her dead aunt. Like <laughs> it's just so like bizarre and and awful. Um and this whole idea that Cheetah is like some kind of entity to be controlled and and, and not really enslaved, but like controlled by a man, which I I don't know. It just I feel like there's a better way to do all this. Just, you know, just make all the different versions of Cheetah one big family. And they've all been Cheetah over the years. And and now Barbara Ann is the most recent Cheetah. I don't know. Just, that would be kind of fun. Okay. So, this guy is my least favorite version of Cheetah. And that's Sebastian uh, Ballesteros. Uh, he's the only male Cheetah, to my knowledge. Um, I'm pretty sure there has not been another male Cheetah after him because they realized it was a bad idea. Uh, he's an Argentinian businessman and creator of the third S Silver Swan. So that's like his m worst thing that he could have possibly done. Um, but besides that, he's basically the worst. He hates poor people. Like He legitimately hates poor people. He became rich. To like make poor people's lives worse. Like how does that not make him the worst person? Um, Wonder Woman and, vil and billionaires just do not mix. Like Wonder Woman hates billionaires. Which is why I don't know how she tolerates Batman. Um, <laughs> because she literally snaps billionaires necks. Like that is her pastime. Is fighting the rich. Um... But yeah, that's that's like some kind of side issue. But Wonder Woman and like money just she doesn't she doesn't dig, dig it, you know. Comrade Diana over here. Um <laughs> Uh so So Sebastian steals the powers of the cheetah from Barbara Minerva. Um <laughs> Comrade Wonder Woman, indeed. <laughs> Um, so, so basically it's like, it's Debbie, then it's Barbara, Barbara Minerva, then it's Sebastian, and then it's back to Barbara Minerva, so I kind of, I put Barbara last, so that way we can just kind of talk about it all together, um, cause his, he has a very short lived run as, uh, Cheetah, because Cheetah, ki Barbara kills him, so, Besides stealing the powers of the cheetah, the, his whole reason that he was meant to be cheetah is because he's a man. That's literally, like, he goes to the go god, uh, Urs Kartaga and tells him, Listen, all these women are super weak. I'm a big, strong man. Let's be partners. And, and the god is like, that sounds like a great idea. It totally makes sense. Why am I asking for all these virgin brides when I can have a big, strong man? Um... <laughs> we're we're literally the same hat meme same same hat uh but yeah comrade wonder woman but yeah so that it's just like a bad idea it you know honestly sometimes i feel like it was just a bunch of dudes in the editing room they're like but you know like what if cheetah was a dude and it was like oh my god that's brilliant uh, you know narrator voice it wasn't um and really, his biggest crime, more so than just being male cheetah, is that he's responsible for Vanessa being the third silver swan. He kidnaps her uh, after she's undergoing all this psychological torture and basically adds these cybernetic implants to her body, which Veronica Kale finishes it off and adds even more. And basically, all this like torment and torture that vanessa goes through is as a result of this guy who wants the silver to use the silver swan's power um and and really 
Cheetah, when Barbara gets the powers of, of Fury, which is like this big demon thing, and kills Sebastian, it was completely justified. He deserved it. He had it coming. Uh, you know, if this was Chicago, uh, Cheetah would be singing. Um, he had it coming. So, but yeah, he he deserved death for sure, just for being like an awful person and literally hating poor people. Like, <laughs> like he's some kind of Trump villain. Um, as far as favorite stories, I would say like him dying, which is Wonder Woman Volume Two, eighty six, one eighty six through one eighty seven, are his best stories. He shows up, you know, he's like the villain. There's other per people to focus on instead, but really just just read about his death. Watch like she had, like show up as like this big demon who's like I'm going to kill you. It's great. Um and honestly, I'm glad he technically does come back in like New 52, but as an alter ego for Barbara Minerva as uh what did what was the name? I forgot the name, but it was like it's basically Sebastian but like the the, the female version of Sebastian and it was one of her alter egos because she's like criminal or whatever um so yeah that's that's pretty much uh Sebastian we don't really need to talk about him anymore because he's dead and hope he never comes back um so on to the main player Barbara Minerva Barbara and Minerva uh, specifically, Dr. Minerva. She has a lot of degrees. Um, and you should totally respect that. Um, for sure, the most recognizable version of Cheetah. Like, when you think of Cheetah, you're thinking of Barbara and Minerva, more than likely. Um, so, post-crisis, the Cheetah was completely rebooted. Uh... She wasn't Barbara Ann Minerva just yet, but she was Dr. Barbara Minerva, a British archaeologist known for going to any lengths to retrieve an artifact. She's basically the unethical Indiana Jones or Wonder Woman's Moira, so to speak, if you're a fan of Overwatch. Um, so while searching for the fabled Urskatarga tribe, her team is ambushed uh, and betrayed by her guides. In the chaos, she stumbles upon the ritual that transforms a host into the cheetah. Um, the previous host is killed, but uh, she manages to trap the high priest Chuma and convinces him to perform the ritual on her. She kills her partner um, and sacrifices him to the plant and... <laughs> Okay, I just have to put it in perspective. I still really like her. She's better than Moira, for sure. I'm just saying that if you had to put it into perspective, she's very much unethical like Moira. Um, especially since she kills people for, like, her sacrificial rituals. Um, so, yeah. So, on the night of, like, a blood moon, she sacrifices her partner... Uh, and becomes the cheetah. Later on, it's revealed that because she wasn't a virgin, uh, the god Urskatarga decided to punish her by making her body extremely frail and weak, and so she has to continue to consume human flesh to maintain the cheetah form and to maintain her strength. So, you know, kind of yikes with that whole... I'm, I demand virgin brides sort of thing. Um, you know, that it's just, I, I don't understand what was the thinking behind that. I was like, oh yeah, totally. Uh, and, you know, because she's not a virgin, we're going to punish her by making her body super weak. Um, another thing about Barbara and Minerva, she does have to walk with a cane. She has like a very, like a permanent disability. Um, and that was, like, kind of before, and that's as a result of transforming into Cheetah. Um, they kind of fix that in Rebirth in a, in a kind of a, in a very simple way, which I'm glad they did because it was kind of bad. It's like, 
Well, she's disabled now because she can't be the cheetah. Like, no, that's just bad. So the current version of Cheetah is Barbara Ann Cavendish Minerva. So Cavendish is her father's name. Um, and Minerva is her mother's maiden name. She takes on her mother's maiden name, Minerva, after her father refused to support her interest in archaeology and ancient history and all that. Um, she is one of the few humans to find evidence of the mascara. Like, in the DC universe. Because technically, right now, the mascara is completely unreachable. Once Diana left the mascara, she could not go back. Um, she holds multiple degrees, speaks seven languages, and she helped Diana learn uh, English. She was basically one of Di she, she was Diana's first friend. Um, so, seek after Ares and all this, she decides to seek out more information on the Divine and re receives funding to travel to Burunda, which is a uh, fake African nation in the DC universe, um, to study the Urskrataga. However, the exp exp uh, oh, excuse me, ex the expedition was uh, was actually trapped by Veronica Kale to turn her into the cheetah. They wanted to turn her into Cheetah to find uh, Themyscira. Alright. See ya. Thanks for stopping by. So, um... Unfortunately, Diana wasn't able to stop uh, Barbara from becoming Cheetah. And as a result, Barbara blames... Uh, as a result, Barbara blames Diana and herself, uh... She's fully aware that she is the she is the author of her own misfortune. Um, and her girlfriend is Etta Candy. And I will continue to remind y'all that Barbara Anna Minerva is a damn lesbian. So, um, but yeah. So it's a little more tragic. Um, her <laughs> permanent disability is a result of a really bad um, archaeology uh expedition to find the mascara originally this was before her expedition to cheetah to, to to become cheetah so the um so the, they really fixed that whole her body's frail and weak because she isn't cheetah sort of thing um so again like i said uh, barbara minerva is the most recognizable cheetah um and this version of the character carries a lot of baggage uh, in the Perez era, there was a ton of racist stereotypes about Africans, um, about African nations. I mean, the location of the Urskataga tribe was somewhere in Africa. Like, they, they, they couldn't even name, like, a place or a country or even make up a fake country for it. It was just, like, some place in Africa because they're all the same, right? Just put it in a forest. It's fine. Um, and especially Chuma, who was the the priest responsible for the ritual and helps Ch uh, Barbara become Cheetah multiple times. Um, you know, he's, he's you know, sem semi-illiterate. Uh, they give him a weird accent by, like, making him talk like Yoda in, like, the speech bubbles. It's really bad, and, and the way they draw him... I think is very very racist <clears throat> in terms of what they believed a savage African child might might look like and they've smoothed the thing they've fixed a lot of things in rebirth but there's still that whole like oh obviously it's a uh, savage African like no it should that that's not how we should be talking about people in Africa and stuff like that so so I think by giving more of a history behind Bruin Bruinda and and the and making the Urskataga more mythical, they've kind of helped take back some of those racist stereotypes and kind of get rid of them. Um So yeah, that's again, Wonder Woman has ha always had this troubling history with you know racism and 
racist stereotypes and i think that's with a lot of comics but it's just sometimes it's it's like well, did no one like catch this and i'm sure it's because there's a bunch of white people in the editing room that are like this is fine but yeah um that's kind of the whole situation and then you know on top of that you add this whole narrative that because you know M uh, barbara was unclean because she wasn't a virgin um it just like speaks to the heaps of misogyny that are present in comics like it, it and it speaks to like a s obsession with sexual assault and harassment um that really just kind of reflect the climate within the comic industry that's slowly getting better but it's still pretty pre uh, relevant um in a way if you kind of take away some of like the bad decisions and bad actions cheetah takes because she does do villainous things um she, being the cheetah is seen as a punishment for being an ambitious sex positive woman um of course minerva goes beyond being simply ambitious she's downright greedy and uh <laughs> And, you know, the, not the Barbara Ann version, but the uh, the Barbara Minerva version is very much, um, a villain at times. Uh, but again, the Rebirth version has really worked to rectify some of these problems. And I'm not just talking out of my ass when I say Rebirth is a really great comic. Um, you know, they, they, they give the the earth kataga uh, more of a history which kind of um makes it feel like a believable place in a sense minus all the were cats and were dogs kind of thing um they directly tackle the obvious assault themes in the idea of giving away a virgin bride and her willingly giving herself to the this god uh in a way in a way that gives restitution to not only cheetah but the rest of these assault victims that get a chance to like essentially fight a god and defeat him with wonder woman's help and i think that's very powerful and i really enjoy that and i'll kind of go over more of kind of the importance of that as we kind of discuss where cheetah is now so yeah that's barbara and minerva there was a lot there's a lot to discuss um so I'm trying to think if there's anything else that i'm forgetting about cheetah i mentioned she was a lesbian so that's good that's the most of my, if you could have one takeaway um oh yeah no, kind of like the whole Virgin Bride thing is almost, and, and in a way you can kind of see Cheetah as being a punishment for being a gay woman kind of thing. But that's like a really long stretch and just something that you kind of sort of notice while reading, but that's beside the point. But yeah, uh, as far as favorite stories go, um, Wonder Woman Rebirth is an absolute must read. You don't really need to read the older versions of Cheetah if you're just looking for a great version of Cheetah. Because it's essentially a start, like, we're restarting Wonder Woman, like, from the beginning. Uh, Wonder Woman, volume 3, issues 1 through 4. Uh, Cheetah has, like, a very sexy look in that one. I really like that one. For a number of reasons. But also because, like, she doesn't look like Cheetah, per se. She get, She's able to transform into Cheetah, into Cheetah at will because she has control over everything now. And she's able to, like, command big cats at will. So that's where that power comes from. And I really, I thought that was a cool version. And also because Cersei appears in that uh, for first few issues a lot that I think is really fun. As well as, like, Giganta and a lot of other Wonder Woman villains that make it worth checking out. Um, But yeah. Like, I don't know what the Wonder Woman 84 look will of Cheetah will be, but if they got to go the sexy route, I would say they take inspiration from that initial run. <laughs> oh my god, that version of Cheetah is a lesbian Chad. <laughs> like, without a doubt. Um... But the biggest chat is Cersei. That's just that's just a damn fact. 
Um, yeah, Cersei is for sure the biggest Chad of them all. Um, so I'm just gonna briefly touch on other versions of Cheetah. They really didn't stand out to me, and I really didn't want to go and reread Wonder Woman Odyssey. But in Wonder Woman Odyssey, Cheetah is a resurrected dead Amazon turned into the Cheetah. There's not a lot of depth depth to that because the real story of Odyssey was like Wonder Woman trying to restore the timeline. And then New 52 Cheetah is Barbara and Minerva, but this Cheetah was is like an actual thief. She's a criminal. She infiltrates uh, the government to steal treasure and become the Cheetah. And along the way of the New 52, it's revealed that she's dedicated. She's a part of a cult dedicated to Hippolyta. And they're like a group of huntresses that kill men um, and eat the hearts out of people. So fun stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot of consumption of men as Cheetah. Um. And they don't shy away from that. Cheetah very much enjoys eating people. Well, actually, she just enjoys eating men. Um, very, very specific uh, kink there. Um, very, very specific. Kind of weird. But you know what? When a woman loves her anyway. So, now that we know who Cheetah is, the different versions... <laughs> gay rides is eating men. <laughs> I hope that's not what you're... I hope you're just referring to Cersei and not... I'm assuming that is a reference to Cersei because you're probably a little bit lagging behind and not a reference to Cheetah lore. So... But yeah, that's all about... Like, that's just a pretty basic summary of Cheetah and so, like, you can kind of see... You know, we're going to see Barbara and Minerva in the movie. Uh, more than likely, they're going to use the post-crisis version with the Uskataga uh, tribe and plant god. I hope so. It really honestly looks like... <laughs> I'm sorry. It really looks like they're pulling from Rebirth. I really hope so. Um, mostly because it's such a great run, and I think it'd be a great kind of solo not ooh, i did not mean to hit that uh, it would be a great solo story especially since patty jenkins hinted at uh wonder woman being an anthology of sorts where she just is telling the stories that she wants to tell um which i totally support her in that i think that's a good strategy so i think it would just it would just be a good you want the best version of cheetah out there and that would be the best version so but where is Cheetah now? Where has she been? Um, where does she come from? Where does she go? Where does she come from? Cotton Eye Joe. I, that was not in the script. I'm sorry. I should not have said that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Cheetah has had an, an interesting transformation over the years. And very much like Diana, she, there's just been a little consi consistency across the Wonder Woman timeline with regards to her character. There we go. Um, in my opinion, the current version of Cheetah is not a villain. She's more of a victim. Or she's at least an antagonist, but she's not necessarily evil. Um, you know, she doesn't she doesn't necessarily have complete control over her animalistic instincts and and she very much wants to escape the life as cheetah um you know and a big thing is you know having a mental disorder having a physical disability be not being a virgin or being a virgin like none of these things should make you a villain or should be the reason why you are a villain you know, and neither should jealousy of another woman, stuff like that. Like, that's all just really petty. And, and you can just tell, like, dudes just honestly don't understand how women, you know, women operate. Um, <laughs> you know, furthermore, there's, like, the racist stereotypes within the post-crisis version. They're just <laughs> glamorized within, you know, Cheetah's origin and version. 
Um, and, and to me, that's just lazy writing. And it's taken us a long time to get past that. Uh, it, but again, it sounds like I'm being overly critical. But there's a lot of good that you can find within the Cheetah. Um, within the Cheetah comics. And if you decide to start reading a lot of Cheetah stories. Like, they're fun. They're, there's a lot of fun in those. But I feel like it's important to kind of, like, discuss in terms of how Cheetah has changed. Like, you know, where she's coming from and what... And what I've had problems with as I kind of learn about the character more. So, you know, currently Barbara Ann Minerva defeating the god Urskataka, which is this violent, abusive male god that's obsessed with, you know, fertility and all this, um, is a very powerful idea. And I think they were, I think they, they were very smart in that being the focus of like the initial start of Rebirth. Um, Cheetah over time, and, and, and it makes Cheetah over time this more symbolic, uh, kind of character, and, 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 you know, she becomes, like, this physical manifestation more so of, of, like, the hurt and anger abuse women face, and, and it becomes, like, an allegory to how society view women who are overly angry or overly emotional stuff like that which i think is kind of cool and what i have taken from the character as i as i've read about her more um the cheetah now you know is an out lesbian seeking to atone for her mistakes and fully understands um that she is she has had a part in her own misfortunes um she doesn't necessarily have the tools or the ability to like overcome this and, and when she does, and when Warner Woman, you know, steps in and will continue to step in because she wants to save her friend, um, she's able to overcome that. And and she willingly chooses to go back to be, she really willingly chooses to be Cheetah to save someone else. So, in, in a sense, at that point, Cheetah, to me, is no longer a villain because she chooses to be Cheetah to save someone else. It's very self-sacrificial. Um, and really cool. So maybe Cheetah's just lesbian Jesus sacrificing herself. I don't know. Um, you know, and, and, and the tragedy of it all is that she's not necessarily going to be able to overcome Cheetah because, you know, there always needs to be a Cheetah. If there's a Wonder Woman, there's a Cheetah. That's the kind of villain Cheetah is. It's Ares is so basic and lame yeah, he's used all the time, but the fact is, here's Cheetah, literally the perfect villain of all time because Diana feels like she's failing her best friend every time she has to fight her. So I think that's very compelling and very emotional and very much a woman loving women kind of story, in my opinion. Um, and and I and I've enjoyed that slow transition from start to finish like where uh, reading for the most part in order all of cheetah's appearances even the minor ones um i think it's good that she's had this long history because people have been able to work on her and improve and sometimes make worse but they've improved on cheetah a lot and and honestly out of all of cheetah's or the out of all diana's characters cheetah has changed the most um she's adapted much like her counterpart and i think that's why she is so compelling as far as villains or antagonists go in the um in the wonder woman universe uh, you can't say this kind of thing about aries you can't see it, say that he's changed there's been different versions of him but ultimately he has the same kind of motives the same kind of emotions and and he's very one-dimensional in my opinion like, he's more compelling when he's not trying to destroy Wonder Woman. Because he's always after the same thing. Whereas you see these different versions of Cheetah, they're all after a different thing. They all see, view Wonder Woman differently. Um, and, and you can't really say that they're, like, Barbara and Priscilla are necessarily the same people. There's similarities, but they're not the same. They have totally different motivations. Ares is just boring. and um, But he's kind of like... He has to be there because he's Aries or whatever. Um, she's a you know she's an antagonist that's relatable in the sense that you can underneath 
this uh cat were cat person you see a uh, a believable and sympathetic woman um and you can empathize with her struggles up until the point she starts you know killing people and um you know sacrificing them to become this monster but but even through that you can see that like she's struggling to keep her humanity like you know there and remembering that she is not just the cheetah she's barbara um or she's priscilla and stuff like that it's true and i will continue to say it aries is just boring like it, it, <laughs> He, he, honestly, he'd be more interesting as an ally for Wonder Woman because he's one of the gods. I don't see why they don't do that more often. They did it once. He was just like a chill dude with his shirt open and he just walked around with a bunch of scars and he was like, hey, Diana, what's up? And Diana's like, you're not going to attack me? She's like, no, I'm totally over that. Um, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, you can honestly empathize with Cheetah's struggle and what she's going through. Um, and, and she's relatable in the sense that she has made some awful decisions and has faced terrible consequences for them. I hope, uh, and, and we're kind of wrapping up here and I'm going to discuss kind of little things after the end, um, some other stories that are worth checking out. My hope is that as Wonder Woman evolves and as her story changes, so does Cheetah. You know, they build on the fact that she's a gay woman and they build on the fact that at a candy is her girlfriend and they build on the fact that she's trying to fight this 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 powerful god that seeks to just dominate and control women women um and that you know they don't just default back to like oh cheetah's just villain number five this week that diana's gonna fight so um I want them to up the ante on the the gay angst and and the the fear that Diana feels whenever she see, see whenever she sees Cheetah that you know she's never gonna save her best friend and that she's gonna lose her best friend to this beast. So that's kind of where, um, you know, that's kind of Cheetah. That's kind of the analysis of Cheetah and like the kind of character she is and where she's been. Through the ages and and how, really how she's one of the one of the most compelling Wonder Woman villains and worth checking out in terms of reading about her stories because a good cheetah story is a good Wonder Woman story. Um, you know, it it goes both ways. Like, you really can't have a good Wonder Woman story without this like centralized kind of antagonist. Um, because then it just becomes preachy. So, so yeah, I, I really, as I've read more Wonder Woman comics, I've realized just how critical her villains are and how underrated they are because everyone just knows Ares. They're like, oh, it's just Ares, like, you know, and it's like, Ares is like, okay, yeah, that's just Ares, whatever. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of compelling Wonder Woman villains that are worth checking out. So... You know, uh, that's Cheetah. I know this episode is a lot shorter than any episode so far. Uh, we're still, you know, we're still working out the kinks in terms of, like, what works, what doesn't. I probably won't do a huge episode like that again. But this is kind of the time frame I hope to keep, like, between an hour, an hour, 30 minutes, I think is good. Um... But yeah, if you have any questions about Cheetah, I'm happy to answer them. Uh, as far as other stories go, this is like stuff beyond the Wonder Woman comics. I, of course, recommend Legend of Wonder Woman, the new Sensation comics. That's where you can kind of see some of the other versions of Cheetah again um, and, and like new interpretations of Cheetah. Um, Wednesday comics is kind of like this weird, it exists as like this weird thing. Um, but there's some interesting versions of Cheetah. And Cheetah is also in Bombshells, which is just this completely AU version of superheroes. So, then, you know, just it does whatever it wants. Um, my sources. Uh, Comic Vine. Comic Vine. Until the new DC Encyclopedia comes out, 
Comic Vine is like my number one source in terms of pinpointing character appearances. Uh, especially if you are like looking to just check out like random cheetah stories, go to Comic Vine, search cheetah. Don't pick Cheetah Antarctic Press because that's just like some weird fetish comic. It's weird. I accidentally clicked on it and I was horrified. I'm like, what is this? But yeah, no. Uh, Cheetah, the DC version. Um, you can find all of her appearances. Uh, my only wor warning is that they literally list everything with Cheetah. Even if a character went, oh, hey, where's Cheetah? They mention that comic. So I, I read a lot of comics that were like, where's when's Cheetah showing up? And she doesn't. It was just like a villain mentioning Cheetah or Wonder Woman talking about Cheetah. <laughs> I was like kind of pissed off. Um, but yeah, any of the comics that I recommend, I really enjoyed. Uh, you might find others that you liked more. That's fine too. Um, so my other source was definitely the comics. Uh, you can find a lot of these comics on Comicology. I like how it's censored fetish. Um, <laughs> um, I was honestly scared, but it was just like this really, it was like a furry comic. Um, it felt like if she had like really big boobs and it was kind of scary. And I was like, I was like, I don't, I don't want to find out what this is. I don't want to find out what kink you're talking about. Um, but it was very much a furry comic. Um, so yeah. I was like, oh, okay, no, thank you. Uh, yeah, so just watch out. Watch out. There's a lot of cheetahs out there. Um, truly curse. Truly curse. But yeah, just just happy hunting with your cheetah adventures. Um, before I sign off, any final questions? Um... anything else that you felt I missed or would like to hear about uh, you can also find me on Twitter at Llama Amelia if you think of a question my Twitter is open for your questions I will not discuss the cheetah from Antarctic Press no thank you um, <laughs> but like if you have any suggestions about like what do you want to see uh, any kind of improvements to the stream I'm always open to suggestions um, I'll be posting this episode on YouTube in a few days if you missed it, or if you want to, like, watch it again, I'm all for it. Uh, you can watch it on there. I will get to work on editing the two, uh, summaries that I have, so that way, if you're, if you're not able to listen to the sound, you can at least have a summary of my thoughts, and, like, a reference place so you can find the comics, like, oh, what comic was she talking about, and you don't have to reference the video, but yeah. So I'll get to work with that. Uh, thank you, everyone who joined. Um, thank you, Cog Whistle, for the follow. Thank you, Andrew, for stopping by for a little bit. And thank you, Rory, for uh, keeping me company. Uh, luckily, you didn't have to sit through like three hours this time. Uh, the next episode will be August. 30th yeah august 30th maybe we'll yeah thinking i'm trying to determine if i'm gonna do august 23rd or august 30th um there's a lot of weeks in august uh but for now i'm saying august 30th for episode four i will have a poll on twitter in terms of what i should talk about next um but yeah that's pretty much it Thank you guys, and you know, if you like the Themyscarin Agenda, follow me on YouTube, follow me on Twitch, maybe subscribe. Uh, for sure, follow me on Twitter for weird Wonder Woman tweets. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys on Sunday. I'll just be streaming some whatever video game I can think of. Uh, and I will see you next month for episode four. Alright guys, see ya.